Okay, we're going to be looking at momentum and impulse today, and the question is from the KZN March 2017 examination. A car is traveling east along a straight road. The driver sees an obstacle across the road and applies brakes. Once applied, the brakes allow the car to slow down. Unfortunately, this is not sufficient and the car crashes into the obstacle. The car hits the obstacle with a speed of 4,674 meters per second and it takes 0,2 seconds for the car to come to a stop. The mass of the car and driver is 1100 kg. And the first question asks us to define the term impulse. Now we know from our definition that impulse is the product of the net force that acts on an object and the time for which the force acts. We now want us to calculate the change in momentum that the car experiences. So to calculate change in momentum, we are going to use change in momentum. And we know that change in momentum is the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So that is MVF minus MVI. And this is on the data sheet. And we get this equation because we know that momentum is mass times velocity. So the final momentum is mass times final velocity. And the initial momentum is mass times initial velocity. Now we're going to substitute into the equation. The mass of the object is 1100. The final velocity, we're going to go to the question. They say that the car comes to a stop. So eventually, its final velocity is zero. And initially, before the collision, it was traveling at 4,674 meters per second. So the, initial, the final velocity is zero. And the mass of the object, 1,100. The velocity initial is 4,674. And then we put that into our calculator. And we get an answer of negative 5141,4. And we do not leave our answers as a negative. We have taken motion to the right as a positive. So 5141,4, change in momentum or momentum is measured in kilogram meter per second. We get that from our equation, kg meters per second. And the negative... We have chosen to the right as positive, so the negative indicates to us that the change in momentum is to the left. And that is your final answer for 4.2. They now ask us to calculate the resultant force on the car during the collision. So to find the resultant force, we are going to use the impulse momentum theorem. And the impulse momentum theorem on the data sheet says that the net force times the product, the, sorry, the product of the net force and the time is equal to the change in momentum. So we are looking for F net. The collision time was given in the question. Let's go back to the question. It was given as 0, 0,2 seconds. The change in momentum we had calculated in the previous question as negative 5141,4. It is very important to substitute that as a negative. And now when we put this into our calculator, we get an answer of negative 25707. So that would be 25707. Force is measured in newtons. And the negative indicates to us to the left. And that would be the answer to that. Using laws of physics, explain how airbags can help to reduce the chance of injury in collisions such as this one. So I've just brought in a little summary uh, from the first buddy, which shows how to answer a question like this. Now, what airbags do is they increase the time of contact. It takes longer for the object to stop. So the change in momentum remains constant. But the change in time increases, the time of contact increases. Now from the equation F net delta T 
equals delta P. This is our impulse momentum theorem from the data sheet. If I rearrange this equation, I would get F net equals delta P over delta T. And now we can see the relationship between F net and delta T is one that is inversely proportional, provided that delta P is constant. So looking here, we can say that F net is inversely proportional to time when the change in momentum is constant. So that way, if the change in time increases, that would mean that the net force decreases and there would then be less injury. So this is a popular question in the examination and to get full marks you would have to write your equation, you would have to show your proportionality relationship that F net is inversely proportional to time when delta P is constant and then you would explain and show how there would be less injury. And this question can be asked a number of ways. They could talk about crumple zones in a car, airbags, humans and animals bend their knees when jumping and landing, high jumpers land on a mattress or a mat instead of the ground, cricketers bring in the ball when catching, and that kind of thing. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe so that you don't miss future videos. And share this video with your friends so that more learners can benefit from this lesson.